بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه واتباعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين uh, in the name of Allah the compassion and the merciful all praise is due to Allah may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad his family and his followers all until the day of resurrection i'd like to uh, thank you so much uh, my respected brothers in the community of uh, uh, expatriate Muslims in Kuwait. Um, this is a pleasure. I've been with you for a number of years now. I'd like to thank uh, the Islamic Center of Kuwait, the Ministry of Islamic Affairs in Kuwait, and uh, also the uh, Foreign uh, uh, Public Relations at uh, Kuwait, Masiratul Khair. I see that these are the sponsors of this, uh, of this series. Uh, obviously, uh, talking about this very subject is very interesting in of itself. Well, because uh, when, you, when we talk about Qasas uh, al-Anbiya, the stories of prophets, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon every one of them, obviously it is interesting, uh, but this is not like other stories. These are true stories stories of uh, privileged, selected people by Allah and chosen by Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to deliver and convey the message from Him, uh, glory be to Him. So it is important and obviously we cannot say anything regarding these stories except where we have a, an authentic source to address these issues because so many writings have been have been done regarding the stories of the prophets, peace be upon them. But uh, the idea is we will not uh, uh, show here, we will not say anything unless it is supported by the book of Allah and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, uh, or at times authenticated by scholars, well-versed scholars of Islam throughout the ages, those that are known for their uh, knowledge, trustworthiness, and uh, uh, superiority in the fields of the uh, Sharia knowledge. Well, as I said, uh, the telling the stories of the uh, prophets, peace be upon them, is a matter of ghaib, or the unseen from the unseen world. And uh, therefore, we depend on what we call al-isnat, the uh, narrow, uh, the narration or the chain of narrations regarding this and it has to be based on knowledge otherwise there could be so many things that would be that would be said in this regard well uh, what would be the purpose of uh, addressing this very important topic well we need first to uh, benefit from these stories as they are being told in the glorious Quran and in the Sunnah uh, of the Prophet, peace be upon him, so that we can benefit from their own uh, uh, biographies, their own life, the situations where they dealt with their own nations, um, and what happened in between them and their nations, so that we can find lessons, things to benefit from in our lives. and. Another purpose is to uh, give assurance and even comfort to the Prophet, peace be upon him, as and his in his own followers, when they are told about previous believers, previous prophets that preceded our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, so that uh, uh, it will affirm our faith in him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, we'd like to know more about the uh, styles of da'wah, the way they conducted themselves, they, how they dealt with uh, their own nations and among uh, their own people. The, uh, the glorious Quran tells us about exchanges of communication and uh, arguments that took place uh, among the prophets and their um, followers or their enemies or their uh, the people that they uh, had uh, some confrontations with so that we um, we learn how to do how to convince people in this in this regard all of this can be learned 
from the, uh, the stories of the prophets, peace be upon him. Also, we need to learn from their own uh, good manners because we're supposed to, to follow their own guidance, not necessarily their own sharias or uh, laws that were applicable uh, in their own times, but rather we need to learn from uh, their guidance, uh, good manners, uh, things that relate to their iman, things that relate to their uh, firmness in, 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 in commitment to the deen. Uh, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهُ فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِهِ So you follow them in their own guidance. And uh, obviously it will increase our iman as we see what happened to these great prophets throughout history and what happened to them. And it is also an affirmation of the message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because he... Uh, uh, told us he brought this um, through his own sunnah but even in verses uh, that were sent to him and conveyed and revealed to him uh, through Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam to, to us in the glorious Quran so that would affirm that he knew because how would he know uh, these true stories about these prophets had it not been for being himself a messenger and prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are things that we, um, we, we benefit from and, and, uh, and, and learn from uh, being uh, told about these stories and, and, and talking and addressing this issue. Uh, now, what would be uh, uh, the status of believing in the, um, in, the, in, the, in the prophets of Islam? Well, first, how would we believe in this? Well, we need to have a firm belief uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for every nation a messenger who calls them to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid the worship or take partners with anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were all sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were truthful, honest, and they delivered the message exactly like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, told them to do so. And some of them Allah told us about their names, but others Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for himself because we don't know uh, uh, many of the names. As you know, when we talk about their numbers, we will know that uh, we only know uh, this amount of number, uh, uh, the, 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 this uh, number of, of the uh, prophets and messengers of Allah. So believing in them is a principle of faith. A Muslim would not be a true Muslim unless he believes in all the prophets and messengers of Allah. If anyone rejects or denies their uh, prophethood or messengerhood, then obviously he would commit a rejection or kufr of all of them. We do not distinguish among them in terms of the, the belief, the firmness that they are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we must believe in every uh, thing that they told us, which was authentic and reported to us either in the glorious Quran or in the uh, true and authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. We have to follow them and take guidance from their own Iman, from their own Tawheed and the completeness of Tawheed and the great manners they showed uh, uh, through their, their lives, uh, peace be upon them. Also, this will lead to believing in our beloved Prophet ﷺ, who's the seal of all these prophets and who's the best among them. He was sent not only to his own people at his own time, but rather to all uh, mankind and to the jinn as well. He is uh, the last and final messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. So this is the status of, of the belief, and this is their, their importance. And uh, we have to believe them uh, as, a, as, a, as a whole, all of them together. But 
we do not believe in the details except uh, just as I, ta as I said, whatever was uh, um, revealed to us in the glorious Quran or was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Well, what is the, um, uh, the hikmah or the wisdom behind the uh, sending? We first know that there was no nation ever uh, in, the, um, uh, in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, I mean, uh, in, in the history of humanity, except there was a messenger who was sent to them, to his own people, because it's either uh, uh, a messenger who brings a new message or a prophet who would um, revive the same message uh, that a messenger preceded him. Uh, so every nation was sent a guide, a messenger uh, to guide them, as Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, So there is a guide for every nation, meaning a prophet who will lead them to the right path. And uh, the wisdom behind this is to call upon people to worship Allah alone, to establish Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to forbid the worship of anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also uh, uh, showed us the, uh, uh, the way and the path to follow to go to Allah. Allah. How would we reach into uh, following, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This would not be possible without uh, messengers and prophets. Assume there was no uh, prophet or uh, uh, a messenger that would be sent to people. How would people know uh, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It has to be, there would, there would need to be uh, a guide uh, a conveyor, a means to uh, convey what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires, what Allah wants from the people because he did not create them in vain as we know. Allah created us for a purpose and that purpose is to worship him alone and to establish tawheed and uh, to obey him in the way the prophets told us to do, I mean told us as humans to do and for us it is our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was sent to us um, as, as, a, as a nation. Uh, the uh, one wisdom also is to tell us about the future, particularly about the second life after death and what would happen on the day of judgment. This would not be possible to be told except by uh, Allah subhanahu wa by, by the messengers who are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is also to establish judgment uh, for people because people would say, uh, those disbelievers will come and, and say on the day of judgment, ma ja'ana min bashiri wa la nadir. So they will say, uh, there was a, no warner nor a glad tider that was uh, uh, sent to us. Well, every, every nation was given a warner and a and a, and a glad tider, Bashir wa So uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is something established by Allah and this is part of the fairness and also the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is part of the rahmah, this mercy of people to guide them and to save them from hellfire. So that is the purpose of what we call al-bishara wa nidara, glad tiding and warning. Uh, glad tiding of, of uh, paradise and good end if you follow what Allah requires and also to warn if uh, anyone disobeys Allah's commandments and does not really follow the true path of Islam. Now, coming to uh, who are these prophets, who are these messengers and what their numbers uh, uh, are? Well, According to an authentic hadith reported by Al-Imam Ahmad in his book, Al-Musnad, uh, there are 
124,000 prophets, 124,000 prophets. And uh, the, uh, according to the same hadith, uh, 315 or uh, something in between like um, uh, 311 to 319. Uh, because the Prophet ﷺ said in another report, uh, is between the number of uh, 11 and 19. So that is, that is uh, in, in one other report, it was, it was said uh, 315 uh, messengers. So messengers are less than, than prophets. And you know, uh, there would be a need to distinguish between what a prophet is and what a messenger is. Well, a prophet is anyone who was sent to revive, to convey the same message that was sent to the same people before him. Like in the children of Israel, uh, Bani Israel, uh, thousands of prophets were sent to them, not necessarily um, bringing, bringing a new message, but rather to revive the same message that was sent, for example, by either Musa or Harun or um, uh, the the uh, Kifl or uh, uh, Yaqub or all these prophets that were sent to them, and and then Isa alayhi salatu wasalam alayhim jamiyan salawatullahi wasalamu before the coming of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And uh, uh, among these three hundred and fifteen messengers, twenty five were named for us in the glorious Quran. You find in Surah Al-An'am, uh, Ayahs uh, 83 to 86, um, the mentioning by name of all these prophets, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, after A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, وَتِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا آتَيْنَاهَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ Now you count with me. إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَى قَوْمِ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنْ نَشَاءٍ وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ وَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ كُلًّا هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِهِ دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَى وَهَارُونَ وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَزَكَرِيَّا وَيَحْيَى وَعِيسَى وَإِلْيَاسْ كُلٌّ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ وَالْيَسَعَ now the number is 18 uh, in this in these uh, verses and the rest we were told about them in the glorious quran in allah astafa adam another ayah wa ila adin akhahum huda another ayah wa ila thamuda akhahum saliha and in the other ayah wa ismaila wa idrisa wa dhal kifl and in a, another ayah, وَإِلَى مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبًا So Shu'ayb, Adam, Hud, Salih, Ismail, Idris, Dhul Kifl, Shu'ayb, and then our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who's uh, mentioned by name in the glorious Quran, Muhammadun Rasulullah. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُمْ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ الرُّحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ Till the end of the ayah. Now these are mentioned in the glorious Qur'an. Now in Sunnah, we know that uh, there are some prophets uh, that were mentioned, like Sheath. This was reported by Ibn Hibban with a good uh, narration. And then Yusha ibn Nun. Yusha ibn Nun is the companion of Musa alayhi as-salatu was he was mentioned, and, and most probably he is a prophet. But also, we have some doubt regarding Dhul Qarnayn. Now, whether Dhul Qarnayn is a prophet or, right, or a righteous, salih uh, man, we, uh, we have no confirm. Also, Al Khadr, who is also a companion of, uh, of uh, Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, Yusha is Al Fata meaning uh, the servant of, uh, of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and Al-Khadir is the companion of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Also, we were told about by the Mufassireen that uh, when Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِذْ قَالُوا لِنَبِيِّ لَهُمْ إِبْعَثْ لَنَا مَلِكًا نُقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Who's that Nabi? 
Well, uh, according to some uh, many of the seers, it is Shamuel or Samuel, if you will. And also we were taught about Tubba. Now Tubba, as the Prophet ﷺ said, I don't know whether Tubba is a, a prophet or not. And Daniel as well. So uh, we have some doubt regarding Dhul Qarnayn, Al Khadr, Tubba, and Daniel. But most probably we have Sheath, Yusha ibn Nun, and Shamuel or Samuel as prophets, as this was mentioned in the uh, in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam. Let me go into um, uh, Al Asbat. It was mentioned. Al Asbat in Ulu Amin Billahi wa Ma Unzila Ilayna Ma Unzila Ilayna Ibrahim wa Ismaila wa Ishaq wa Yaqub wa Al Asbat. Now, who are these Asbat? The Asbat are the descendants of Yaqub. They are the children of Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam. Their number is twelve, and the glorious Quran did not mention eleven of these Asbat, but only mentioned Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam. And among the, um, we have, we know that they were distributed geographically between the Arabian Peninsula, uh, Greater Syria, like uh, Syria and, and, and Jordan, um, and the areas surrounding the, the Greater Syria in general, which is Palestine, Jordan, uh, Syria, and, uh, uh, you know, Lebanon. These are the, the, uh, uh, the Greater Syria, Asham. And we have some who were sent in Iraq uh, and some who were sent in Egypt, like uh, uh, Musa, Harun, and Yusuf, alayhim, jami'an salatu wa salam. So we have this geographical distribution, which is basically in this, in this area of what we know today as the Middle East. Now, should we uh, distinguish among any of them? Well, we, uh, we do not distinguish among any of them, only we know that they are the selected people among humanity, they're the best among humanity. And obviously among themselves, there are some who are more privileged than others, like messengers are more privileged than prophets. And among messengers, we know that Ulul Azm, those who have determination, and these are the five, Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad, alayhim salawatullahi wa salamu. Obviously, they are the most honored and privileged among all the messengers, peace be upon them. And then we have Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the master of all of them, who is the uh, more honored because Allah gave him more privileges than he did to previous prophets. But of course, we do not distinguish any of them uh, among, among them. We all, they're all the most respected. We, um, we love them. We uh, really pray upon them because it's, it's the sunnah of the prophet, peace be upon him. Once you mention their name, you say sallallahu alayhi wa, wa sallam, or you can say alayhi as-salam or alayhi as-salatu wa salam. Although it's possible to make, to say, uh, uh, you know, anyone, but after the mentioning of the name of a person, you say, alayhi salatu allahi wa salamu, but this is known among the scholars of, uh, of Islam to say that only it's supposed to be directed towards the prophets and messengers of Allah. Now, the first one of them to be sent to humanity as a prophet was Prophet Adam, the father of humanity, alayhi salatu was salam. Although he was sent to his own family and then to the people who uh, came out from his own children, but he was the first prophet. And he stayed for about 10 centuries because the uh, one after Prophet Adam, alayhi salatu was salam, was a, a messenger Nuh, Alayhi salatu was salam. Now we know that Nuh was the first messenger to be sent to the people of earth, and Adam was the first prophet sent to humanity. So we know that uh, for sure that Adam is a prophet and Nuh is a messenger, and in between them, 10 centuries according to the authentic hadith. And uh, 
because uh, uh, there was no uh, uh, no kufr, no shirk uh, during the time of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam for 10 centuries, even after he uh, died, except uh, when the people of Nuh came and, and then shirk started in their own time. And it was, it started with a good intention, uh, at least from their own side. They, they, uh, they thought that um, in order to remember the good righteous people before them, they just made statues for them so that they can remember them. Once they see their images, they would remember them and then they would work hard in the worship of Allah. But then later on, shaitan let them into worshiping these idols rather than to see them and remember uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship him. So that's why idols are not allowed in Islam. And in fact, this is a, a practice of jahiliyyah and ignorance. It was not supposed to be, and it's not right to, uh, to do so. Um, and then we know that uh, the messengers came after, uh, after that until, and they, uh, you know, they, they came in, in these uh, great and huge number, as you, as you see, and as I told you, uh, until uh, the final messenger, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Now, what are their characteristics? Well, first, they are men rather than women. They are human beings rather than angels or any other creatures. So they are men from among humans. Allah has picked them and chosen them and supported them with uh, judgments and hujjah wa burhan with uh, full judgment. Uh, and he asked them to convey the message to their own people, uh, to the people that they were sent to. Allah has honored them with ubudiyah because everyone is a slave and servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, he described that for them as in the in the places of honor, like Subhanallah Asra bi Abdihi Laylan. Glory be to Allah who sent his own slave at night. This is on a night journey. This is Al Isra. This is regarding Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam. Also, another ayah Allah says, Tabarak al nazal al furqana ala abdihi. Be blessed is, is the one who uh, revealed al furqan, the distinguisher, meaning the glorious Quran, upon his own slave, meaning Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And uh, 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 also regarding Isa, in wa illa abdun an amna alayhi, he is but a servant. And uh, also, walaqad sabaqat kalimatuna li ibadin al mursaleen. So all of the mursaloon, all the messengers of Allah, are but slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, they had this uh, human nature and characteristics. They, they eat, they sleep, they um, uh, forget. Uh, they um, get sick, they die. All of them died except Isa alayhi salatu wasalam was raised uh, to heaven as a, a, as, a, as a miracle for him, peace be upon him, and he will be coming back again, as we know on the second coming before the day of judgment to prove that he is a follower of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he came with tawheed and he would reject all of this shirk and... Uh, polytheism that was attached to him um, when people uh, thought that they would worship him, peace be upon him, rather than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they, they, they considered him to be a son of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's not, when he's not, he's just a human being. Well, uh, we're not supposed to uh, uh, go uh, in, um, in, in extremism regarding their status, because some people, some people actually thought that they would, uh, they really, they really uh, need to um, uh, go uh, and, and raise them above their status. Well, their status is known to be uh, a status of uh, of uh, uh, slavery to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and also to be humans. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, and therefore. We have these um, uh, non-true stories about 
how Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was created from light or was created before the heavens and the earth and all these things that um, go so extreme in raising the Prophet uh, uh, beyond his position as a messenger and a prophet of Allah. And what an honor. This is a great honor to be selected and picked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be uh, you know, his own servant and conveyor and to uh, deliver the message uh, uh, of Allah to, uh, to people. So we need to be careful uh, in this regard um, because uh, sometimes we have these uh, extremist uh, views uh, of Prophet وسلم, including our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. And of course, uh, the worst thing is to associate partners with Allah, either as messengers or angels or any other uh, uh, creature, whether being a, a human being, a jinn, um, uh, an angel, anyone or anything uh, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Well, uh, there are some details that I will not go into, but I would, I would like to talk about their characteristics after, you know, I talked about description. Uh, they are, uh, as I said, men, because they were not men, women, because we know that uh, if they were women, how would they deliver the message? How would they uh, go and travel and, and be always in contact with people? And we know that women may be uh, hampered at times by their own, um, you know, natural, uh, uh, like, uh, period and so on. So this would, would prevent them from being uh, always in the uh, best form of a human being and not have and not having any shortcomings. Plus, people may not accept a woman. You know, throughout history, always uh, m women are not accepted as men, although we don't in any way demean the position of women because we have our mothers who are the wives of the Prophet Muhammad as the best. We have the best um, women in the, in the world like Maryam alayhi salatu wasalam. Khadija is the best of women and, and, and all the uh, prophets, uh, I mean, all the uh, great women throughout history. But just only to, to, to let you know uh, and talk about the importance of having males rather than females to be prophets. Also, the prophets are infallible, meaning that they do not commit major mistakes. They do not commit shirk. They do not lie when they tell anything, when they told anything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they may uh, commit like minor, minor sins. And this is the position of the great scholars of Islam throughout history that yes, prophets may commit uh, minor uh, uh, mistakes, but then they would be corrected. And we've seen that like regarding Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, regarding Prophet Ibrahim, or regarding Prophet uh, Musa Alayhi Salaatu Wasallam when he was overcome by anger, and so on and so forth. So they are, because to prove that they are human beings, they're not angels, they would not fall into mistakes, but these mistakes are soon to be corrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, their, their eyes may, uh, may sleep, but their hearts would not sleep. And uh, uh, when they are, uh, when the angel of death would come to every, any one of them, uh, he would tell them, uh, he would ask them whether it is uh, possible to uh, take their soul or not. So they will be given the choice. And um, the earth does not eat their bodies. <coughs> mean they do not, uh, 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 you know, uh, dissolve as, as 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 bodies, but rather they will stay uh, as fresh uh, with their uh, flesh, um, you know, until the day of judgment, until the day of resurrection. And uh, they uh, were they would be buried in. Wherever they, they die, as we see that the Prophet ﷺ was buried in the same room that he lived in, that is uh, the room of Aisha radiallahu anha, and that's why he was, uh, it was outside the uh, Prophet's masjid in Medina, but then later on was added inside the mosque by Al-Walid ibn Abdul Malik at a later time, although it was not 
supposed to be within the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The, also, they did not they would not they did not leave anything to be inherited as, as, as in terms of money or wealth but rather they left knowledge to be um, taken and to uh, to learn from they were uh, free they they were never slaves also they were the most complete in in terms of their uh, khulq and khuluq the, the khuluq and khalq so in their own creation the way they look the way they act uh, they have they are they're very uh, smart and clever they have all the good abilities yes at times like when musa ali salatu wasalam had uh, some difficulty in in the uh, in uh, pronunciation he was supported by his brother ibra uh, harun alayhi salatu wasalam but other than that they are uh, the best in this in this regard because they were selected and picked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every prophet had uh, uh, an answered uh, dua لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ دَعْوَةٌ مُسْتَجَابَةٌ and they were sent from among the uh, uh, dwellers of uh, uh, cities rather than the desert because they're more civilized. Um, also, they would not have a wet, wet dream and uh, their wives would not be uh, married by anyone after their death and um, uh, of course uh, one of the things to uh, to tell you about about the uh, uh, extremist positions regarding the prophets is that sometimes we combine the uh, uh, name of the prophet peace be upon him uh, I mean, in the same level, writing in, in masjids or any place, uh, the name of Allah and then the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Well, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would come after Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So this is important. This is important. That's why we uh, always need to be, um, to be careful in this regard. I'm coming almost towards the end, although I have so much material to cover. But let me uh, tell you something about... Uh, uh, I would I would complete this with uh, sources. Now I understand that um, we uh, we need to depend on sources. Where do we get information regarding these prophets and messengers of Allah, alayhim jamian, as-salatu wasalam? Of course, the first source would be the Book of Allah, al al Quran, al Karim, the glorious Quran, and then the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the books of Ahadith. Uh, that will serve very well by scholars of Islam throughout the ages, uh, starting from Al-Bukhari and Muslim, uh, Abu Dawood, uh, uh, Ahmed, uh, Malik, uh, you know, and Nasai, uh, and, and then the rest of the uh, great uh, scholars of Hadith uh, and collectors of Hadith and, and those who really scrutinized uh, the reports of Hadith. So these are the, uh, the great uh, uh, scholars of Islam, we depend on their books, uh, which were authentic. Also, uh, historical books that were verified. And, and the one, uh, the best uh, uh, cited uh, book regarding the stories of prophets is the book of Ibn Kathir, Al Bidaya wa Nihaya. When he talked about the creation, uh, he also uh, talked about uh, the, uh, uh, the prophets and their stories. And uh, this was uh, selected and uh, taken into a separate book by, by some authors. But Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, along with uh, Abu al-Fida Ismail uh, Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he uh, actually summarized his book and verified some of the reports inside. Because as you know, Ibn Kathir was a historian and a scholar who made uh, uh, this, this great book of tafsir, uh, voluminous, uh, I think it's about uh, seven or eight uh, volumes of, of tafsir, and it was um, uh, luckily uh, translated into English. And in this book also was translated into English, uh, the book of Qasas uh, al-Anbiya, or the stories of the prophets. And uh, uh, you know, we depend on what is uh, the book of Ibn Hajar, Tuhfatun Nubala fi Qisas or Qasas al Anbiya. Tuhfatun Nubala fi Qasas al Anbiya. So, the, um, uh, the, uh, this uh, great uh, book 
um, by uh, by Ali, uh, Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah. And also there is a, a, a book by Ibrahim Al-Ali uh, regarding Al-Ahadith Al-Sahihah Min Akhbari Qasas Al-Anbiya Alayhim Salatu Wasalam. So the authentic hadiths regarding the book was collected by Ibrahim Al-Ali, Jazahullah Khairan. Um, also, uh, the book by Dr. Umar Al-Ashqar, Rahimahullah, who wrote his book, Al-Rusul wal Risalat, the uh, messengers and the messages uh, regarding the prophets of Allah, peace be upon them. And then we have a book by Abdul Rahman Al-Sa'di, Rahimahullah, where he wrote this book, uh, basically benefits uh, from the book by, by the name of Masabih al Fi Qasas al Anbiya, Masabih al Diyah, Fi Qasas al Anbiya. And uh, uh, there are some, uh, some books, I would say, some authors who talked about uh, uh, the uh, trees of prophets uh, trying to make uh, uh, this uh, uh, historical developments and, and uh, uh, genealogy or uh, uh, the historical. Uh, uh, traces of, of prophets and who ever came first and came last. Well, we cannot depend on this. In fact, there are so many people who really uh, did fall into mistakes. And one of the common mistakes you find in these trees that are very widely spread uh, on the uh, uh, on the internet is um, is where they made Idris alayhi salatu wasalam to be the father or the grandfather of Nuh alayhi In fact, he was a prophet from Bani Israel who came in later after Ibrahim alayhi uh, You'd find that common mistakes. Also, they would include prophets. They may not be proven to be prophets and so on. So that is that is the, uh, the problem with that. So we do not depend on these trees. We do not take them for authentic, authenticity. We may just look at them to get some idea, but not for sure we understand that this is telling exactly the truth um uh, you know i i would stop here i may have something to add inshallah in the in the following um meeting inshallah azza wa jal, next week and i would uh, stop here maybe for any questions any inquiries and uh, آخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين